Hello, my name's Paul Stockdale from ABCPE, uh, the site where we try and make VCEPE as easy as ABC. Thank you for joining me again today. I'd like to talk about angular motion. Uh, this has been a request from a young lady from a school. So thank you for sending in a request. And anybody else out there who'd like us to make a video, please send in your requests. Uh, so angular motion is any movement around an axis. That axis can be internal or external. Uh, and it's caused by an eccentric force or a force that um, is applied off center. Uh, you, torque is a fancy word. It simply means how much rotation an object has can be calculated by force. That is the amount of force you apply to the object times lever arm or where you apply that force. You apply the force uh, further away from the center of gravity, then you're going to get a greater turning effect. An example of this in sport is young Bex here um, trying to bend it. He will try and kick the ball on the very outside of the ball. If he kicked straight through the center of the ball, he wouldn't get any spin whatsoever. If he kicked it just off center, he'd get a little bit, but if he kicks it right on the outside, he's going to get lots of spin and hopefully bend it plenty. Here's a quick video to explain what I'm talking about. Okay, so here I am going to push this uh, phone, as it turns out, directly through its center of gravity. And as a result of that, I get very linear motion. That is, the force was a linear force directly through the center of gravity, linear motion. In this trial, I'm going to push just off center. That is, I'm applying an eccentric force. And you can see that that phone begins to turn. We now have angular motion. That is, we have motion around an axis point. In the next trial, I'm going to start pushing from the very outside of the phone, that is as far away from the axis or the center of gravity as I possibly can, right on the outside of the phone. And as a result, I get quite rapid rotation around an axis. That gives you an idea of torque. I get more torque, same amount of force, but applying the force further away from the axis point. All right, well, we need to learn about Newton's laws when we talk about angular motion and uh, the good thing is really you don't need to spend a lot of time on this um, they're very similar to the linear ones the first one is inertia and um, that is that uh, a body will remain in its state of motion unless an external force is acted upon it it's very very similar to the linear newton's law so no need to worry too much there second law is still acceleration but this time we we talk about a torque and um, that is that a torque applied to a body will cause it to accelerate, directly proportional to how large that torque is, um, and inversely proportional to its inertia. However, when we talk about angular motion, we don't just talk about inertia or mass, um, we talk about mass times radius squared, or the moment of inertia. We'll talk about that too when we get to angular momentum. So Newton's third law, action-reaction, I'm tipping that this is a possible exam question. So for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, or for every torque, there is an equal and opposite torque. And we've got the example there of the volleyballer, arm comes back, and as a result of that action, the reaction is that the legs come back. And a lot of people go, well, hang on, back, back, that's the same. But in actual fact, if you look at the axis points of the shoulder and the hips, um, when the arm comes back, it's traveling in an anti-clockwise direction. When the legs come back, they're traveling in a clockwise, therefore it's an equal opposite reaction. Same with the, uh, the long jumper there. If you wanted to look at a practice question, there hasn't been one. Uh, there hasn't been a VCAR question, but this is a very likely question in this year's VCAR exam. So have a read of it. And then when we unpack it, we need to find out where those three marks are coming from. And I would suggest that using Newton's third law, we need to basically define Newton's third law. We then need to, um, there's no equation. So we simply say equal and opposite uh, reaction. We talk about the example um, of the volleyballer moving their arm back. And as a reaction, as a reaction to that, the legs go back in a clockwise direction. Here is uh, an exemplar. So there it is, you have the definition and then the explanation using the example of the picture. 
Now, I said that we talk about angular momentum. This is just to let you know that uh, there is a separate presentation on angular momentum, and this one most definitely um, is a common exam and SAT question. So well worth you while looking that up. If you go to our website, you will see the, um, the presentation on angular momentum, where moment of inertia, that mass times radius squared, will be explained in greater detail. Only a short one today. Thanks very much for watching. Remember, if you need more resources, if you'd like tutoring, or you'd like information on our revision seminars, please visit our website, www.abcpe.com.au. I've been Paul Stockdale. We'll see you next time. Thank you.